This chapter deals with heat transfer at the inside of pipes and is called internal flow. The first section reviews the relationships in fluid mechanics. The second section introduces the thermal relationships and sections 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 present the thermal analysis and convection correlations. This video deals about the fluid mechanics of the flow in a pipe. So the learning goals are to identify the, if the regime is laminar or turbulent, calculate the length of the entry region, we also have to define the entry region, develop an equation for the velocity profile in laminar case, and find an expression for the mean velocity. Hydrodynamics considerations. Uh, we have the flow into a pipe. So um, for this pipe, the diameter is going to be D and the flow goes from the left to the right and there is no component of the velocity in any other direction apart from x so in other words the velocity which is a vector with components u, v and w for this particular case only will have components in the u because the other directions are zero so this is a vector which is composed of only one component and also the velocity in x is going to be a function of the velocity the position x and the radius r that means the velocity will depend from the distance from the entrance and also how away from the center we are so we can identify, for example, that at the contact with the wall, the velocity is zero, and at the middle, the velocity is maximum. Now, let's define the mass flow rate. So the mass flow rate, if we remember from flowing mechanics, is defined as the integral over AC. AC is the cross-sectional area. Let's highlight it here. This is the cross-sectional area AC. So the integral of rho dot product, the velocity, and with the normal and the normal is a normal in the direction so that will be normal to this surface so the normal will be in this direction and um, because the velocity is only uh, in one direction and can be the dot product can be simplified as u just u and so the integral uh, can be further simplified assuming that the density is uh, um, uniform over the whole cross-sectional area. Besides, if the velocity is constant, constant means that all the vectors here are, have the same magnitude, so we can take the velocity out of the integral and the mass flow rate can be expressed as rho multiplied by u multiplied by the cross-sectional area. But we can define a mean velocity that satisfies this equation. So the mass flow rate can be expressed as rho multiplied by some velocity we call the mean velocity multiplied by the area in such a way that this should be complied with this equation. So that means that the mean velocity that I have a bar u or can also be expressed as um is going to be equal to 1 over the area the cross-sectional area multiplied by the integral over the cross-sectional area of the velocity multiplied by dA and that allow us to use a um, simplified form of the mass flow rate in a pipe <coughs> for the entry region um, we are going to um, analyze what happened when a fluid is coming from the left and originally is uniform but as soon as it gets in contact with the surface of the pipe is going to be an um, alter and um, at be mainly because of the friction the viscosity it will make this point in the fluid to stick so the velocity uh, of the fluid against the wall is going to be zero and we can think of this situation as the boundary layer in a plate 
The only difference is that uh, this boundary layer is happening all around the surface of the pipe. So there is going to be a region at the entrance which the velocity is still the same velocity as it before coming into the pipe but there is going to be a region in which there is a gradient in the velocity this one being 0 and this one being 0 0.99 the velocity of the unaltered fluid uh, what is interesting in a pipe is that as we move in this direction in X the boundary layer size keep increasing this will increase increase until the boundary layer thickness is equal to the radius and from that point onwards there is no going to be variation in the profile so the profile will remain the same and that region then is called the fully developed region and the region before is called the hydrodynamics entrance regions and the point when this transition is happening is called X fully develop hydrodynamically that distance defines where the fluid is fully developed the Reynolds number we call it Reynolds D to differentiate it from the Reynolds in a plate is equal to the density multiplied by the mean velocity now we have the mean velocity multiplied by the diameter and divided by mu otherwise we can define it in terms of the um, kinematic viscosity if we divide by the density so u mean multiplied by the diameter and divided by nu we can have an alternative form of uh, the Reynolds number um, based on the mass flow rate so the mass flow rate is equal to the density multiplied by the mean velocity multiplied by the area we can solve for the mean velocity so the mean velocity is equal to the mass flow rate divided by the density and divided by the cross-sectional area and replace it in this equation for Reynolds so we have that the Reynolds D is equal to rho multiplied by the mean velocity which is this value mass flow rate divided by rho divided by the cross-sectional area and multiply by d and divide by mu so we can cancel the density and we can also expand uh, the area so we have the mass flow rate multiplied by the diameter and divided by the area which is um, pi d square divided by 4 and multiplied by mu so we can cancel the d in the numerator with the 2 and the 4 is going to be moved to the numerator we have that the Reynolds D can be expressed as 4 mass flow rate multiplied by pi D mu so this is a new expression for Reynolds and let's remember about the regime the laminar and turbulent regime if I have a line that represents the Reynolds number so in between 0 and 2300 we have laminar flow and um, if we have over here 10,000 we have fully turbulent and in this region in between 2300 and it will depend on the book let's have here let's say 5000 so we can have a transition and um, this transition so the turbulence start and the and for sure from 10,000 onward is fully turbulent but in this region there is also turbulence officially it is considered transition in between 2,300 and 5,000 but that will depend on the book so let's have a look to the entrance region okay so we have mainly the two situations so we want to compute what's the value of uh, x fully developed hydrodynamic so for laminar flow we have this expression that um, is going to be equal to d divided by 20 multiplied by Reynolds uh, also you can write it like 0 0.05 d multiplied by Reynolds and in the case of turbulent flow in general we have that is in the, in the distance for fully developed uh, turbulent flow um, it will be in between 10d and 60d but in practice we can take this distance so 10d 
So let's make a little table to have an idea how this works. So let's have Reynolds and um, we have the distance for fully developed uh, hydrodynamically flow. So if we consider a Reynolds of 20, this is laminar, so we use this equation. So Reynolds of 20 divided by 20, so we'll have that XFD is going to be equal to just D, the diameter. If I take a Reynolds of 200, which is still laminar, so that will be 200 divided by 20, that's going to be 10, so the distance will be 10 times the diameter. If we have 2000 Reynolds, we are going to have 100 diameters distance to get the fully developed flow. Now let's take a higher number for Reynolds. Let's take, for example, 50,000. So if we have 50,000, so 50,000, it is uh, turbulent flow. So according to this rule, we have to take 10D and any other number like, I don't know, 100,000, we still keep the same 10D. So we can see something interesting. So for this point onward is turbulent. So we have laminar and we have turbulent. What we can observe is that for laminar, it goes from D, 10, 100 D. So this is a very long distance to get fully developed. But in the case of the turbulent, it's 10 D. It's like having this situation and it's not going to change much. Okay, so these are a couple of questions that you have to be prepared to answer for the next class. So we have a pipe and in this pipe we have um, some gradient of pressure and the gradient of pressure is the responsible for the movement of the flow. So the flow is moving in this direction and the question is, is the PDX, let's consider this case, greater than zero, less than zero, or equal to zero. Second question is, now let's consider two different points, or different points. If the flow rate is constant, then the PDX is increasing, or the PDX is decreasing, or the PDX is zero, or the PDX is constant. Well, the next section, we are going to examine the velocity profile for the laminar case. For that, I'm going to take a section of the fluid. So we have the pipe and inside the pipe I'm going to take like a layer of fluid. So you can see this, I'm taking this layer of fluid and it's like a, a hollow cylinder. So this, if you, if you wanted, this is a still this cylinder by only looking, I'm taking this section here. So I'm looking to the top part and the bottom part that by symmetry that should be equal. And um, so this is at a distance R, is not in contact with the surface, it's away from the surface. And we are going to analyze what happened, what are the forces in this element. First of all, let's notice that uh, the fluid on, on the surface is zero, the fluid on the middle is probably the maximum velocity. So the velocity of this element over here, this is the velocity at R, is mm, positive, but the velocity in this side is smaller. So this is the velocity at the position UR plus DR. So that velocity is less than UR. So there is, uh, the, the bottom part is being pulled by the fluid in this side and the upper part is going to hold backwards by the fluid that is in this part. So the, that's what is causing that the velocity on the upper part is smaller than the velocity in the lower part. So let's analyze the balance of forces over this differential element. So I have it here in big. So what do we have? So in the lower part and in the top part, we are going to have friction. That friction is causing a shear stress. So to compute the force, we have to multiply the shear stress times the area. So what is the area that we have to multiply? Well, it's the area that is all around in this section, but in contact with the water. So it is all, all this area 
that here on, we can only see um, a line of the area. So that's going to be this perimeter, which is 2 pi r multiplied by dx. So multiply by dx. And on the left hand side, we have a pressure. So the only thing that we have on the left hand side is the pressure multiplied by the differential of area. And that's going to be this area. Now, to computing the opposite sides, we use a little bit of calculus. The pressure on the right hand side, remember this is a distance dx, so it is going to be equal to the pressure on this side plus the variation from this point to this point. How do we measure the variation? Is the pdx, because we are moving in the x direction, multiplied by the distance that we move, dx. So this will give us the pressure in this in this um, phase and now we have to multiply by the area. We can do exactly the same thing for the shear stress on the top. So the shear stress on the top is equal to the shear stress in this section plus the variation in this direction. This direction is r. So is the variation of this which is 2 tau pi r dx in this direction multiply by how much did we move so the r so let's write the balance of forces in that section so we have that the sum of forces in x equal to zero is equal to px multiplied by da uh, minus this force p of x plus the p dx dx multiplied by the area plus the shear force on the inner surface plus 2 pi tau r dx minus the force on the top so that's minus 2 tau pi r dx minus d dr 2 tau pi r dx multiplied by dr and that should be equal to zero. Now, let's analyze these terms. First of all, for the pressure, we have Px the area, positive, and we have Px multiplied by the area. So this one we will cancel with this one. Now, in the shear stress, we have 2 pi tau r dx, and we have minus 2 pi tau r dx, so these two cancel. And the equation is simplified as minus dp dx, dx the area, minus d dr of 2 tau pi r dx multiplied by dr equal to 0. We can also expand the area and this differential of area it is going to be equal to 2 pi r dr so if we write it down dp dx multiplied by dx multiplied by 2 pi r dr minus d dr multiplied by 2 tau pi r dx dr equal to 0 so we can simplify dx with dx we can simplify the 2 with the 2, the pi with the pi, and so finally we have minus the p dx, and we can simplify the dr additionally, multiply by r minus d dr, multiply by, or well, not multiply, the derivative of r multiplied by tau. Now we can have an expression for tau if tau is defined as mu multiplied by du dy according to what we know. dy being the distance from the surface. Mm, so the only thing that we have is to write it in terms of r. So we have to notice that r is from the center towards the wall and y is defined as the distance from the wall. So formally, that will be y, and that will be equal to 
r0 minus r so if we want to write this in terms of the r so tau it is equal to minus mu du dr minus this negative side sign came from the fact that y is in the opposite direction of r with the value of tau we can replace it in the differential equation and as a result we have minus dp dx multiplied by r minus d dr multiplied by r and multiplied by mu du dr with a negative sign and this is equal to zero. Notice that the double negative it will produce a positive sign. This is the differential equation that we have to solve. And to solve this equation we need to integrate with respect to r and the pdx uh, is going to be considered constant over the whole surface so the pdx is a constant with respect to r so let's integrate this with respect to r so um, I'm going to move first the second expression to the right hand side we have minus the pdx r equal to the derivative with respect to r of r times mu du dr and because I move this to the right hand side that should be positive now integrating with respect to r at both sides will produce the following on the left hand side the pdx is constant so we have the pdx and the integral of r it will be r squared over 2 equal to the integral in the right hand side which is the integral of a derivative so it will be simply r mu du dr plus a constant a constant i'm going to call c now if i divide by r all the terms and solving for the dr so we have the following mu du dr equal to the pdx multiplied by r over 2 the square is cancelled and I'm moving the c to the other side we are going to have plus c over r and I'm going to divide by mu so on the left hand side we have the udr equal to the pdx multiplied by 1 over 2 mu this is constant multiplied by r and plus another constant c1 c1 is combining c with mu which is another constant divided by r and we integrate again over dr so on the left hand side we have the integration of a derivative so we have u equal to the pdx all the constants are out 1 over 2 mu the integral of r is r squared over 2 plus the integral of 1 over r which is the natural log so we are going to have plus c1 multiplied by the natural log of r plus a second constant so this is our expression for u we need to solve for c1 and c2 constants and therefore we need some boundary conditions so here it is again our equation um, the 2 times 2 becomes a, a 4 uh, we have c1 natural log of r plus c2 and the boundary conditions let's analyze so i already have them in there but the first one is that the velocity at the boundary this is the velocity at r equal to r0 is equal to 0 and um, if this is increasing and this is increasing so there is going to be a maximum point and at the maximum point the derivative of the velocity the velocity is in this axis so this is the velocity and should be probably 
velocity u. And so the derivative of u with respect to r at r equal to 0, it is 0. So these are the two boundary conditions that we need to solve. The easiest way to solve is to consider this boundary condition first. u prime, which is the derivative, equal to the derivative of this with respect to r. It is 2r multiplied by the constant. So that's 2 mu dp dx multiplied by r divided by 4 plus c1, the derivative of natural log of r, which is 1 over r, plus the derivative of c2, which is 0. So the first thing to notice is that if we evaluate at 0, well, this is going to be 0. But the second term is going to be undetermined because we are dividing by r and divided by 0. So if we want this to be equal to 0, so this expression should be 0. So the only possibility is c1 equal to 0. So that means that should be c1 equal to 0. u at r0 is going to be equal to 1 over mu dp dx multiply by r0 square over 4 plus c2 and that is um, equal to 0 as well so we can solve for c2 so c2 is equal to minus 1 over mu dp dx r square r0 square over 4 so we can replace the value of c2 in our original equation and we have that u of r equal to 1 over mu dp dx r squared over 4 plus c2 and c2 it is minus 1 over mu dp dx r0 squared over 4 so we can notice that we have 1 over mu dp dx and 4 and 1 over mu dp dx and 4 so we can factorize that so we have 1 over mu dp dx divided by 4 so 4 mu as a factor of r squared minus r0 squared and thus an expression for u of r we can rewrite this expression as 1 over 4 mu dp dx multiply by r0 square as a factor of r square divided by r0 square minus 1 or we can multiply by negative 1 and we have minus 1 over 4 mu and I'm going to introduce the negative sign here dp dx r0 square multiplied by 1 minus r square over r0 and this is the velocity of r velocity in as a function of r the interesting thing about this equation is that I move this uh, negative sign to the outside because the pdx is negative so when I move multiply by a negative sign it becomes positive now if r is equal to 0 if we are in the middle line uh, the velocity is going to be maximum so that will be r equal to 0 so the, the resulting expression it will give us a value for the maximum velocity so that is let me write it in this page that the maximum velocity is going to be equal to 1 over 4 mu multiplied by minus dp dx multiplied by r0 square so the velocity with respect to r can be written as u max multiplied by 1 minus r square divided r0 square now if you want to uh, 
uh, compared with the mean velocity, which is the purpose of this question, and you will have to do, you have to compute the mean velocity. How do you compute the mean velocity? Well, according to the definition of the mean velocity, is going to be equal to 1 over the cross-sectional area multiplied by the integral over the cross-sectional area of u of r the area that can simplify it in terms of 1 over the area is pi r c u squared multiplied by the integral from 0 to r0 multiplied by u max and the different oh, u max multiplied by 1 minus r squared divided r0 squared and the differential of area which is 2 pi r dr so by solving this equation we can have an expression for um and you should be able to answer this question so see you next time.